Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Contend, O Lord, with my contenders, five those who fight me, Take up your buckler and shield. Arise in my defense, Lord, my mighty help. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us unite ourselves to Jesus through this Eucharist, who offered his life for us so that he may give us hope, life, and salvation. Let us now be sorry for our sins and ask the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that, through, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, with whom I am pleased. Upon whom I have put my spirit, he shall bring forth justice to the nations. Not crying out, not shouting, 
not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed, he shall not break, and a smoldering wick, he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with its crops, who gives breath to its people and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grabbed you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. When evildoers come at me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies themselves stumble and fall. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war be waged upon me, even then will I trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a litter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of his disciples, and the one who would betray him, said, Why was this oil not sold for three hundred days' wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used to steal the contributions. So Jesus said, Leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. 
The large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. The chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus too, because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, on this Monday of the Holy Week, the virtue of tenderness surface in our readings today. Our first reading today and for the next days are taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. That section of the book of the prophet Isaiah about the suffering servant of God. And in today's first reading, we are given a description of the suffering servant. The suffering servant will bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the streets. A bruised reed he shall not break, a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Ang lingkod ng Panginoon ang siyang magpapairal ng katarungan. Mahinahon at banayad siyang magsalita. Ni hindi nagtataas ng kanyang tinig. Ang marupok na tamboy, hindi niya babaliin. Ang ilaw na aandap-andap, hindi niya papatayin. That is how tender the servant of God is. Mahinahon at banayad sa pagsasalita, hindi nagtataas ng kanyang tinig. Yung marupok na tambo, hindi niya babaliin. Kasi minsan, marupok na nga, binabali pa natin. Yung ilaw na andap-andap, hindi niya papatayin. Ganyan siya kahinahon, ganyan siya kabanayad. That is how gentle and tender the suffering servant is. And in our gospel today, we heard about Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, who anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped them with her hair. It was a beautiful, a tender, an intimate moment. Jesus receives tenderness and caring from Mary. My dear brothers and sisters, Pope Francis several times has emphasized the importance of tenderness. And according to Pope Francis, tenderness is not a sign of weakness. Akala natin yung banayad at mahinahon ay kahinaan. Pope Francis said no. To be tender is not to be weak. In fact, to be tender is a sign of strength. For only those who are strong can truly be tender. Only those who are strong can show tenderness. Come to think of it, my dear brothers and sisters, the weak have many mechanisms in order to defend themselves. They shout, they intimidate, they bully, 
they threaten, they torture, they punish. And why do they do this? Because they want to defend themselves. Takot na takot sila dahil alam nilang mahina sila. Kaya pangungunahan na nila ng paninindak, paninigaw, at pananakot. But those who are truly strong will always be gentle, will always be tender, will always be at peace. Because they are so secure, they are so sure of themselves, they could be at peace. My dear brothers and sisters, this Holy Week, especially as we enter the Easter Triduum, we shall witness how tender and gentle Jesus is. He does not fight back. He does not retaliate. He just keeps his silence. Hindi siya gumaganti. Siya ay nanatiling tahimik at mahinahon kahit sa harap ng maraming umuusig at nagpapahirap sa Kanya. And Jesus is able to do this not because He is passive, hindi dahil sinabi niyang, oh, sige, bahala na kayo, gawin niyo kung anong gusto niyo. Jesus is able to do this because He was so sure of where His strength lies. Tiyak na tiyak siya kung saan ang gagaling ang kanyang lakas. He is always gentle. He is always kind. He is always tender. My dear brothers and sisters, in a world that has become very rough and very rude, sa isang mundo na naging masyado ng magaspang at bastos, let us imitate the tenderness of Jesus. Let us recover tenderness because as Jesus shows us, it is only tenderness that can save the world. It is through our being gentle, tender, and loving each other that we could experience new life. Jesus' gentle manner invites us to turn humbly to Him to forgiveness. Assured of His compassion, let us bring our petitions before Him. And for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are suffering and experiencing difficulties in life may bear their trials with patience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That prisoners may have the consolation of the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may come to the aid of the destitute. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the sick may draw courage and strength from the cross of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have gone ahead of us in this life may rest in God's peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, you sent your Son to us on a mission of mercy. Grant that we may always be comforted by his gentleness and strengthened by his presence in our lives 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here, and may what you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incurred Bear for us fruit in eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of His saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through Him the host of angels adores Your Majesty and rejoices in Your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Administrator, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Visit your people, O Lord, we pray, and with ever watchful love, look upon the hearts dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries, so that under your protection, we may keep safe this remedy of eternal salvation, which by your mercy we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble and keep ever safe those who trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities not only with bodily observance, but above all, with purity of mind, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Ourselves, faithfully yours to 